Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. In this quick tip we're going to have a look at what's behind me as you can see a reasonably large turbine generating a reasonably large amount of power. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, first of all, and as you can see this is whizzing around here like that and it's producing 24.1 thousand RF per tick which is reasonable doesn't compare to nether star generators but for a reactor it's as about as fast as you can get i think or as much as you can get and the turbine is rotating just below 1800 rpm so that's doing quite nicely steam is full and water is at last plenty of steam in there plenty of water it's it's receiving 2000 millibuckets per tick which i believe is the maximum you can get from a reactor so let's have a look at the reactor that's connected to it and you'll see it's got plenty of steam in here, plenty of water, and the temperature is around about 800. And therefore, they, I think the fuel consumption is around about 0.6 millibuckets per tick. It goes up and down a little bit, as you can see. Now, let's have a look at the back end of this. We'll have a look at the water first to, afterwards. We'll look at what, how this works. So here we've got some capacitor banks. At the moment it's got a max input of 250,000 RF per tick. I've got a couple of vibrant capacitors which are actually full. But I was going to reuse those on here. So if I shift right click that onto there and right click on there, yeah that works fine. And that on there and then we should be getting power coming in. And we are 24,000 and as you can see here, 24,091 RF. So this will get filled up reasonably fast. from its 216 million RF capacity. And as you may notice, you get these multi-block um, capacitor banks. The input and the output actually also increase by the number of capacitors in here. So if you've got large things like, uh, what could we do? I suppose the, the biggest one ever would be the uh, rainbow generator, which will produce 1 million RF per tick per side. They might have to have a few of these to get that working properly. So let's have a look now at water. I am using these and these are absolutely awesome. I must say, as you can see, normally water is a problem in, in reactors here. So the, as you can see in this case, well, water st stable. It's not using any or it's not reducing any either. So it's perfectly stable. And here is why we've got a tank from pressure pipes. On this tank you've got a controller at the bottom here which shows you I've got one output here and it says active always on and they can have more active. I've also got a bucket in here as well. So let's take the bucket out. Put the bucket here. What you can do is all sorts of things with this thing. You can have filters so you can filter what fluids will be accepted. Um, in this case I've only got water coming in so there's no going to be no problem having just anything except for water but you can in these pipes here have multiple fluids running through it all at the same time it doesn't care and they're instantaneous look here we've got for example a demonic gargantium drum and that's the drums empty let's just pick it up let's turn this off here that's off that's then therefore this is going to be going down as you can see Let's put this tank here in front of this uh, back of it here. Let's turn this on. Let's look at that. It's already full. 65,000 buckets of water. How about that? These things are impressive. And that's one of these uh, infinity water sources from pressure pipes. And here we've got a high pressure input going to this high pressure pipe. And that's connected into the tank using a high pressure intake. Here, I've got another way, I've got a hopper and this is a tank interface and you can tell basically I can turn this on like that and you'll see these buckets of water are going into here like that or the empty buckets are going into here and then you can take them out when you want to just like that and you can do it reverse of course you can put take those out of there let's fill up this with buckets of water and get very many in five plus the one in the tank and these will actually take them out these are actually filling up the thing with water 
as well. So that's pretty impressive. I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with that actually. It's quite pretty neat. Let's put that one in there. Get it out. So that's the tank interface. It's also got red sound signals. You can move it at certain levels. So in this particular case, we're emitting output module is active when the output is signal is on. So basically, it's outputting pressure. That you can change this so you can have a signal when the tank is full. You can disable it. Fluid type. So you can have a a signal when there's a particular fluid in here. So for example, let's put some fluid in here. Take one bucket of water. Put the bucket of water in here like this. Get a bucket of water out of here. Like that. And then we can come in to this one and we can say, oh it's got a bucket of water in there. I think that should work. Oh no. Oh yes, I put it in there. So then it gets a redstone signal on. As you can see, if it got something else in there, you could put other things in it. So the, there's all sorts of things, and here's also a filter. Let me have a look at the filter. Move that bucket out of the way. And you can basically right-click this, and then it filters the thing. I think you should put the filter in here like that, and it gets filtered. And you can see what the fluid is in here. So it's filtered to water. So it can only this tank can now only accept water. And here we have a, a sort of meter, which shows you the level. Now there is actually a tutorial video on this pressure pipes and it's awesome and it's worthwhile having a look at and it's on the wiki page of pressure pipes and the guy that's done it is Bidru I think and Bidru has also done things like Gendustry so he's got a lot of mods that he's done. Now let's have a look at this next. Here I've got two tanks. This one has got vapour of levity in it, these two here and these ones here have got uh, gelid cryothium now these are both coolants for the reactor and here I've got some reactors set up already this one has been has got in it uh, reactor glass and behind that it's got um, vapor of levity and this one here's got jellied cryothium now you have to be watch out for jellied cryothium because it hurts let me show you what I'm talking about Let's break this thing here like that and then it flows out when it flows out and touches you you get damage like that and you get quite a lot of damage fortunately I've got uh, and it takes a few seconds to disappear too. This one, on the other hand, doesn't do it. Doesn't do you any damage. Now, let's remove one of these sides over here, like this. Oops, with a pickaxe, like that. Let's take a bucket here. Just one will do. But let's remove this tank out of the way, and then right-click that, and you'll see that this disappears completely. So it's just one bucket of this uh, vapor of levity. We'll cool this, we'll fill this in, cool it down completely, and it creates snow as you can see. Well, don't care about snow there, because we can just put a place, uh, some reactor glass on it. So let's have a look at the performance of these two things. Basically, I've set these up to be water cooled like this. So that same pressure pipe that's feeding this large reactor here is also feeding these two, like that. So there's plenty of water, in other words. Let's turn it on. This one has got some power in it already, but it shouldn't generate any more power because it's got steam in here. But if I turn this one on here like this, activate the reactor, you'll see that the temperature of the casing and the core both go up almost identically. So that means that the heat transfer using gelid cryothium is 100%. So you don't lose anything in here. I'm going to let that warm up a bit and it'll get very hot but it doesn't seem to matter and let's have a look at this one as well this one is the vapor of levity turn that on because you can see steam this temperature has also went up very fast and they keep rising of course we can control this a bit by going up here and looking at control rods well at the moment the control control rods are all set to 100 percent insertion it says zero percent insertion i think that's the wrong way around And this one now is producing no steam. It should be producing steam actually, but maybe that's because the steam is already full. And it's using 0.2 millibuckets per tick. So that's a lot compared to the other reactor. And this one is doing the same thing basically. It's also producing no steam. 
and they were around about and what I was saying before they were actually this one was producing less steam than the jelly triothium but I think they're about as effective as each other to be honest with you let's just turn this off in fact I suppose if I break the controller if I have to break the controller does that break it put it back in again does it reset everything no it doesn't it's still got steam in there okay so I can't really show what I wanted to show with those but never mind I want to show you the rate it was producing steam at this one is still stable at 117 point try again 1798.4 rpms and it's still producing that power even though these are probably full by now actually so look at this yeah already full and this we how many blocks have we got here? this was actually this design was taken from the minecrafters video so he's got five times eight forty minus three thirty seven different um enderian blocks on here powering this this design is nine by nine by sixteen and it looks like it could be nine by nine by fourteen because there's at least one block here extra that we could probably remove on here these control rods are all set to this one's set to seventy percent and all the others are set to eighty percent so they're basically that's what keeps it cool so if I remove this one here to, now to 80% increasing I don't get this so it's increased by 10 I think that's going the other way around actually because when you do that the temperature comes down and if you're not careful the steam will come down as well so when the steam here drops below 2000 then we're losing power on the uh, turbine let's have a look if it works And as you can see, as it as the temperature goes down, also the usage goes down. So it is a balancing, a very awkward balancing act, to be honest with you. And I do expect this to go below 200 millibuckets when I've done that one. But I don't know how long it takes before it goes down there. If it's still producing 200 millibuckets per tick, you see the temperature is going down. It's now only 300 degrees. And it's still going down. So any second now, I reckon we're going to run out of steam in here. And as soon as you do, this will get used up almost immediately. There we go. Look at that. So let's go back up and put this back up too. Let's in this out. So it's now 70%. And as soon as you do that, the steam gets back up again. So that's around about the maximum. So that's the, the balancing act. I sh it'd be nice if I could tr control this to a percent, but I'm not sure whether you can control it to a percent. Actually, that's, is there a shift or a? Can you actually shift? Oh yes, you can. So we could actually then reduce this by Alt Shift. Let's say Alt. Alt will reduce it to 75. Let's try 75. Let's see how that handles this. Well, it looks like the core temperature is actually stable now. Gone down a little bit. I shall have to leave that for a while and come back and see whether or not it's it's main t it's dropping down too fast. As you can see, it's going up and down a little bit. But that, of course, we've got plenty of steam in there, so that means the reactors still working at 100% efficiency which it is and of course the, the lower the temperature goes down here the less fuel you use and but of course you then get waste and the waste will come out here so we get the cyanide ingots now the last thing I'd like to show you is how I actually made the cyanide if you come over here and you have a look at the um, what we can do let's have a look at this bottom bit here and let's have a look for the um, Eulorium so if we have a look for Eulorium dust here powdered in dust here 
and I shift left click that you can get that from here you can also get that from the crusher and I think you can also get that from the pulverizer let me just maybe that's a different dust eulorium dust exactly so here we have from you if we take a eulorium ore which we get from the void ore miners we can hammer it to produce one we can crush it to produce two in the um, actually additions one and the same with the grindstone you can do the same thing and then in pulverizer you can when you're pulverizing the ore you get uh, two and the tectronic initi initiator you get three and two for that one let's go around a bit more now this one's interesting this is the sagmill and the sagmill you get a chance of cyanide dust so you get two plus a cyanide dust so tell me what percentage it is it usually does which is the one i'm using of course blocks you can do blocks that's fairly obvious i suppose and I think that was the only one. So putting it in the sagmill gives you a chance of getting cyanide dust. And the cyanide dust is what you actually need for the ingots. And the ingots are what you need for the for the turbine rotor shafts and the turbine blades. So that's what I actually have done and blocked the cyanide. And you can make plutonium, and the uses for that are turbine controllers. So from that you can basically make everything you need essential that's industrial craft too but it's also reactive stuff for their for their reactors so that's it for this particular episode i hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and anyway check out that video about those pressure pipes because they are amazing so until next time bye for now